Well, guys, it has been over like a month and a half since the last tour, walk around, whatever you want to call it. Everyone uses the word tour. I don't think we need to call it. It's not a tour. I'm just going to... I suppose it's a tour. Anyway, lots changed, as you can see by this massive thing behind me. So this will obviously be part of the tour. It's a little bit different from when it was first set up because it's going through an algae phase, which you'd expect with uh, all new setups. Anyways, just get started. Loads and loads of tanks here to get through. So first of all, as you come in from the door, we have got the two four foots right in front of us. This is the rainbow fish one. It's changing very soon, which is why it looks like this. But I can get, look, it looks worse than it is. Give me two seconds and I'll have it looking perfect. <laughs> so I also need to point out that my wife's been helping out a lot more as well. Not so much with the fish tank. She does a little bit of glass scraping for me because she's, She's freaked out by fish, if I'm honest, but she's really good at running all the back of house stuff, keeping the place tidy for me, like excellent organizational skills. So that's, uh, that's really brilliant. It keeps the place looking so tidy all the time. So thank you to my wife for that. We've got great news guys. Today's video is sponsored by API and Aquarian. And throughout the video, I'm gonna be using different products on the tanks that I use really, really regularly. And also the food that I use for all the fish that you see as well. And even better news, API have signed up for another year with us, which is absolutely awesome. Cannot thank them enough. It really, really does help. I mean, as you can imagine, the energy costs of running this place alone is extortionate. So to celebrate this and say thank you for all their support, we got one of these to put up. Um, and I'm thinking over there. Okay, this is probably a two-person job, but it, uh, it should work. Got some stickies just to hold it in place initially. Hopefully they stick. Looks about right. Bottom bits as well. I can tidy up the edges in a minute. There we go. I thought that was just a nice little touch to say thank you and extra support. Looks cool as well. What I'm going to do is put like really nice pictures. I've, I've got some pictures of all the fish and stuff. I want to put them all around it so that should look really nice. So as you guys will see, one of the main contributing factors as to why all my tanks look so good in terms of plant growth is because the leaf zone, in combination with the root tabs when I set it up, or even ongoing, if I notice that a tank needs a rejuvenation, you can stick the root tabs in right into the substrate and everything just sort of comes back to life because if you've exhausted the nutrients in the substrate system, this is a great way of getting them back in. Now, the other most common thing I use is Acre Essential as well. As many of you know, I've got a water butt. I fill that thing right up with water, I stick in Acre Essential, and then I just leave it to get to room temperature for like overnight or whatever. And I've got instant, perfect water to be able to do water changes and fill things up. Just makes things so much faster and easier. The three main foods that I feed all my fish, unless they need something specific, for instance, the puffers you'll see later, they have mealworms as well, but they all still like to nibble at these things. But all the tetra and all the other fish pretty much are on the flake. And then we've got the aquarium wafers. I get through so many of these for all the like uh, bristle nose. I use bristle nose to clean the tanks as well as for interest, of course. But uh, yeah, really good. And if there's something a little bit more dense in nutrients and for the quarries and for bottom feeders, we've got the sinking pellets as well. So yeah, we're going to go through all of this as I use it because you know, that's real and that's what you guys would probably want to know on a day-to-day -day basis. How to keep your tanks looking in tip-top condition and your fish looking healthy and colourful as well. So as you can see, what I've done there is make a mess. <laughs> now, the thing is, there's, there's two ways I can do this tour. I can get everything perfect and spend like a day doing everything and then go, look, this is how great everything looks all the time. Or I can do it like this. Each tank I show you, any work that needs doing, will do the work, do it nice and quickly, obviously, in order to sit and watch that in real time. But uh, yeah, this one, it just needed some of the plants pulled out, which has opened up the space more for the fish. Um, I didn't go too hard on, on any of the maintenance because this whole thing's changing. The fish are a lot bigger now and they need a new setup. It's just too small. They don't mind it, don't get me wrong. They can go all the way around um, and they look absolutely beautiful, as you'll see once it's cleared. But I want to do something that's way more open for them, but just looks really cool as well. There we go, look, now we can see completely clear, looking good. But the problem is, look, they all just congregate in this area, especially when I come close. It's obviously the most open area, but they're also like waiting for feed. And they're not always there. Don't get me wrong, like, oh, some of the nice ones just go around that area as well. But yeah, it's a bit too cramped. I'm definitely just going to take everything out and redo it. I'll be saving some of the plants for sure, like the Monte Carlo there. There's like a whole mat, if you like, of Monte Carlo. And all of that has been grown on the wood. So it can just be like reused in the new scape, just in smaller little groupings. There's gonna be a fair amount of wood in the new scape, but not a ton of like plants that clog it all. One thing I won't be doing again is a dwarf sag carpet because this stuff is unstoppable once it gets going. And if you've got a nutrient rich substrate like we put in this one, as beautiful as it is, it's, it's really, really 
really difficult to manage because it, it just goes everywhere. And up the top here as well, you can see, look, the Hydrocotyl Japan. It's just made like a complete umbrella for the whole tank. Like I say, super, super healthy, but just it's not appropriate now for the fish. To be fair, I, uh, I could have scraped the glass as well. So <laughs> Little bit of green spot algae on it, but after I've finished this video, I'm literally stripping the whole thing down and I, all the glass will get cleaned then anyway, so I didn't want to waste too much time. <coughs> uh, I thought I was better, I am. Um, so feeding wise for this tank, we have got the Aquarian Flake food. These guys look, they absolutely love it. They want it already. <laughs> and then we've also got a lot of Corys down at the bottom as well. We've got skunk Corys, quite a big size. We've got a pellet for them as well, but first of all, get the flake in for them. Come on then. <laughs> getting excited. Oh, I've run out of flake food. I need more. It's always nice to get a fresh pot. Okay, guys, here you go. Come and get it. It's so funny to listen to how I'm too close to that. <laughs> Obviously, they're bigger fish. There's a lot of them, so always feed a little bit more. Just as much as they can get through in about, I don't know, a minute or two. And they eat fast. Like they, by the time I've normally gone over three or four tanks, come back, it's always empty. Now obviously the Corys will pick up any flake that goes down the bottom as well, as will the snails. But I also like to put in some specific sinking pellets for them as well. Because as I'm sure you imagine, you, you don't see them too often with this growth. Um, so it's nice to just put some in the front area and get them coming over there. I'll get some shots in a minute. Once they sense it's all here, they start coming round. There we go. Look at the Madagascan. The, oh, he's gone to the back. <laughs> no, he's not. There he is in the front there. The Madagascan with the red sort of fiery tail there. Such a nice fish. And I see you're just being nice and patient, Bozeman. So yeah, very good. That's the lighter subdominant one. There's the dominant one. Look at those colors. Awesome. Obviously the flake helps massively as well with uh, getting good colors, but yeah, I think you can agree. Great colors in the rainbows. Look at the blue. Whoa. <laughs> and then we move over to the end of tank next to it. This is a relatively new setup. It's less than a month old. It's doing fantastically well. Plants are growing great. If anything, once again, they're too fast. Not the plants inside. I trimmed a lot of those back already and used them in the new eight foot. The floating plants though, they are growing crazy fast. They're blocking a lot of light as well, but not too much light because down here, I put a brand new uh, Cryptocrine Flamingo in here and it's already sprouting out all of the nice red leaves. So there's obviously a good amount of light still coming down. And once I strip back these, uh, floating plants and trim back a, f a few of the background stems as well. It'll be just right. There's not really a lot I need to do, f do for it other than that. We've got a ton of babies as well. So they're all breeding really good, which is great. Like proper babies, nice. There we go, that's brightened everything right up. The plants will actually get even more sort of colorful now because there's, you know, there's more light hitting them. Down the bottom, as you can see, I've taken off all the green leaves on the flamingo. It's very, very pink, it looks so good. I actually took out a lot of plants from this section to go in the eight foot, and they're already, I can see, got new shoots and they're sort of sprouting back. So yeah, it won't be long until this one's looking even better than it was. You know, a tank when you first set it up looks nice, but after about a month when it's sort of got more bits of grime in certain places, the plants go where they want, that sort of thing. It really, really does start to come into its own then, and that's what this tank is starting to do. Now over here to the Amazon Puffer tank, which is going amazing again, but one plant in particular is <laughs> completely taking over. It's the Hygrophila polysperma. It's, it's just weeding everywhere. It's stopping flow, stopping light, but the puffers are looking very chunky. Some of them have grown like double. Others are a little bit slower, usual sort of pecking order sort of thing. But yeah, looking so I've just fed them. So they've got big full stomachs as well. Yeah, there we go, look. So the bottom part of the tank down in sort of this section, struggling a little bit with getting some light, but to be honest, it's not affecting the plants. They're all, they're all growing really nicely. So they're obviously getting just enough, but that doesn't mean it's optimum at all because look, it's just, it's come right from the back and grown all the way forward. So the first thing I'm gonna get that all cleared out. So same as always really, I'm gonna just go in there with my hands and just start sort of breaking off stems. I often find that if you do it this way, instead of going in with scissors, not only is it much quicker, but you also get more of a natural look after you finish because everything isn't all in like, you know, squared off exactly the same area. There we go, look much better. We can actually see the fish now as well. Like that's one of the more dominant ones, but this is the absolute beastie boy down there. Look at his stomach, he little fatty. He must've got a few more of the mealworms than the rest of them. But again, that's probably why he's the biggest because he always goes around and just like rips them off the others. I do stand here and I make sure that everyone sort of gets one at least. 
but you notice that like this one obviously he's got a skinnier belly and skinnier look to it than the rest and a lot smaller I mean, I always make sure they get fed though, so. And I can actually hand feed as well with the uh, pincers and just hold it right in front. So yeah, everyone gets fed. Everyone's doing really well. They're, they're much bigger than when I first put them in, that's for sure. So some of the plants that aren't doing well are the Java ferns. You can see there at the back, look, got like quite a little bit of die off. Now it did completely go, but I've been dosing tanks now that have got Java ferns in with even more uh, leaf zone than I usually would to any other tank. And that has really helped a lot of them bounce back. So you can see there, look at, look at those really sort of, they're gone. I mean, they're not coming back at all. They're not even putting off like baby Java ferns either, but the ones beneath it are all the sort of new growth in the tank. And that's been since dosing. So yeah, heavy dosing for Java ferns I've found. So for this tank, it will be four in total. And like, how often am I doing that? Well, at the moment, probably at least once a week. And then a little bit extra. <laughs> Obviously you go by the directions on all the bottles for all of your, your chemicals, but with things like fertilizer, every tank is gonna be different because the demand for the fertilizer is different for every tank based on how many plants you've got. For instance, the Echinodorus we've got down here, it's growing so fast, like extremely fast. So it's pulling nutrients out of the, um, the whole tank itself. Not only the substrate, but the water column, it all works its way down. And then of course, we've got to remember, we've got all that pofos in the back as well. Well, those roots are in the water and it's growing very, very well and very fast. So that's also gonna be pulling nutrients out. So it just needs extra dosing. And without like doing it more regularly than other tanks, the Java ferns don't seem to stand a chance. There's nothing in the, uh, the water column for them. So yeah, I'm just, I've just been dosing it extra. It's doing really well. You don't wanna to go too much obviously because too many nutrients will cause algae. So it's just a case of monitoring everything and making sure that it's doing what you want it to. The good thing is though, of course, getting dead Java fern leaves off is very simple. It's just a case of going in and pulling at it. Because they're dead, they just come away so easy. So it's not like it's any real effort. It takes a little bit of time because you've got to go to each individual leaf, but it's all right, we've got time. I can see now that there's loads of new growth coming along, so that's good. Everything's working, it isn't getting algae, and this should bounce back. And it should be stronger than ever, to be honest, because it's all sort of grown from tiny in this, in this actual water. Sometimes even when you just move a Java fern to a different tank, it can not like it. You know, supposedly a very, very easy plant, the java fern, but they can be a little fussy sometimes. There we go, look, looking a lot better, all clear, loads more light coming in, which means the plants are just gonna, they're gonna grow even better now. I mean, I say that, they're, they're probably growing too good as it was, like way too fast, but at least the plants down the bottom here, which some of them have suffered, if you can see that they're S repens, obviously sort of melted, and then there's now regrow regrowing back, which is good, and so is the Hygrophila lancia, you can see there as well, so, yeah, they're all gonna grow a lot faster and probably start creeping into that foreground soon as well. Let's give the puffers some mealworms. <laughs> Look, they're already ready. Bang, bang. They will start to sort of fight over it a little bit, but you've got to make sure you've got enough in there. <laughs> they do, even when there's enough in there, they still fight over them. <laughs> I mean, they can be quite ferocious with them. Look, it's like a, like a staffy, staffy dog getting hold of its toy and just like absolutely Whoa, guys, just, there's enough to go around, crikey. <laughs> I suppose that does rip them up into smaller pieces, which does, there we go, look. He got a bit, he got a bit, you know, it kind of works out. This one here that's got one now, it's got the skinny belly, you see, but once he has a few in him, it goes right out and it's much, much bigger. Maybe he's just got like a softer underbelly and it looks, it looks smaller, faster. Whoa, you leave it, that's his. Leave it. We've also got some uh, albino cories in this tank as well. So there's one down there now. So a little sprinkle of the aquarium sinking pellet coming forwards now. Uh, the peas also like to have a go on it as well, which is quite nice. Yeah, a bit of extra for them. But the mealworms are great because the because uh, of how tough they are, it sort of wears down their beak so they don't get like problems. But there is a lot of nutrients in the sinking pellet as well, so it's sort of doubling up, which is perfect. They'll still scavenge on the bottom as well, so there's plenty of food in there now for everyone though. Apart from the bristle nose, look at how that look. Can you see that one? Look how nice that bristle nose is. It's kind of like a bumblebee. It's kind of got the same markings actually as the pufferfish. Must be in the same squad. Yeah, there's another little one there, another one the back there. We've got another one there as well. So yeah, we want some aquarium wafers. I just like to stick them in the foreground. Just need a couple. They're only little bristle nose, see? So like for the big ones, I kind of put in one pellet per bristle nose if they're like triple the size of these guys. But these are kind of just juvenile, so it's all good. And then the tank next to that is the Malawi cichlids. Now this is one where I'm not going to have to really show you any works as required because this one just runs on autopilot and is absolutely perfect to be honest. 
for the plan that was growing out the fish. You know, I'm able to feed it a lot and it still doesn't get algae or any problems. So I did originally have higher sort of lighting on this tank when I first set it up, the strip light, and I was like, you know what? I think it's too bright for what we're going for here. So I took off the strip light and bought these two small little um, what, what, gooseneck? Gooseneck lights? I don't know. Spotlights, I suppose, yeah. And uh, they create just a nice little sort of shimmer on the surface that gives that sort of rivery, lakey vibe but also the tank isn't covered in algae either, which is great. Because there isn't any plants in the tank, it means that, that any waste from foods that settled would actually produce algae, but we're not seeing that at all. And I feed heavy in here because these guys are getting much bigger now. The bully isla at the back, the ones with the orange sort of underfins. Look at that one there, it's going full on blue. There's a couple of uh, very sort of dominant males, like this one here seems to be the most dominant male. And, so sort of, there you go, look, it's just charging around and telling everyone where they can and can't go. Because we're stood right here, they're ready for food, so there's a little bit of aggression going on. But, you know, there's no serious aggression in this tank, and there's plenty of places for the fish to go off in their own areas as well. And the cyanodontists are great. Oh, there's one just going around the back. Oh, come back. I keep trying to film the cyanodontist, and every time it comes out here, I click on and it goes back in. I'm just going to wait. There it is. There it is. Such a cool fish. Uh, thank you, thank you for that. Oh, no, oh, we've got more, we've got more. But yeah, there's a good group of those guys in there as well, but Tank is doing fantastic, fish are doing great, and, and it just works. Morning. Oh. Hello. <laughs> you were sacked. Yeah. You were fired, you fell out. Fired, you gave me a black eye. <laughs> well, <laughs> you unfriended me on Facebook. I, I don't even have Facebook. That's what I said. <laughs> So yeah, Matt's been in and gone again. Uh, we were gonna do some filming for this channel, but the main video was for his channel. He's got a video coming out with us. Well, it's gonna be really funny anyway, but just he just wants to come in. We wanted to have a chat. There's some stuff flying around about us, like having a big bust up or something, which never happened. Literally what I told you in the video is what happened. But I can't blame people for speculating, to be honest, because it did seem a bit strange. Why wasn't Matt in that video? It's just, he, he decided what he was doing was his own thing and he went all out on it and it's been doing really well. Um, two weeks ago, he came in here to film the same video, but the audio messed up, so we had to do it again. So it would have come out earlier, but yeah, there's literally no drama. Uh, some people were saying that he left after the eight foot because he did all the heavy lifting. I can assure you, <laughs> if you look at the uh, time-lapse part of us lifting up and down, I lifted this tank up about 30 times in a row, and yeah, I was done. <laughs> also, some people saying he uh, doesn't like my husbandry of fish. I, I'm sure, again, if you ask him, he will say to you that what I do is exactly what he would do. And everything is, everything does really well, you know, especially now we've got like the fish wall to be able to put fish in if we want to move stuff around and that rather than just jumping straight in. Anyway, yeah, we were going to do some more filming, but we were chatting for two hours first. Then we did filming for his video and then we went to the pub and then we run out of time. So yeah, it's not to worry. I mean, he's coming back again. We're going to do some actual builds as well. Anyway, let's take a nice little look at Chunks' tank. Hello, Chunky. <laughs> look at the size of him now. He's such a beast. And like, he's got his little friends, he's got a little crew of Blue Akara. They all hang around together all the time. It's like he's like either a parent or some kind of boss. <laughs> oh yes, all the catfish are coming out as well. I think they're expecting food because I've been stood here for a while having a little look. Uh, in terms of maintenance for this tank, we're pretty good. As you, you can see there, look, a lot of the uh, stem plants, they're all coming back as well because I trimmed all of these off to put in the eight foot. They're already growing, so you do find in a, a well-established aquarium, plants will just always grow faster than anywhere else. And I put in one little sprig of this polysperma, and now it's like gone everywhere, so I'll, I'll trim that back actually, because it's getting a little bit too much. Fish-wise though, everyone's doing really, really well. There's a little bit of a tint to this aquarium, and there always has been. I mean, obviously look at the size of that bogwood there at the back which goes all the way over the top as well. It's never ever gonna be like perfectly clean because that wood will just consistently leach. Even if you put stuff in the filters to pull it out, it clogs those up like within days as well. But it's cool, it's quite a nice little vibe, a little bit different to everything else as well. So yeah, I like it. it. Needs a little bit of a glass scrape, as I think you can see, maybe a little top up, but that's it really. There we go, all nicely sorted. Uh, I'm gonna feed a tank. This one's really fun to feed because uh, Chunks is always ready, look. He's poised, he's ready. Even if I put my hand up here sometimes, he'll come and have a look. He won't now, because I've been in the tank cleaning, but he normally comes up and bites my finger. But he's wise, he's very wise fish. He seems to know everything that's going on everywhere. Let's see how well he notices me picking up the food. Yeah. <laughs> okay, buddy, calm down. Everyone else does as well, look. 
Right, I do a big thick pinch because he likes to gulp at it. Oh, crikey guys, chill out. There we go. He likes to take, he likes to take a big gulp of like a solid clump. I just leave it in this corner. It works its way around. All the other fish sort of, there's a pecking order, you know, tetra stay that way. The Akara second and then Chunks can just do whatever he wants. This is what I mean. You'd sort of expect to see some aggression between him and the other fish. Like, you know, this is my food, but everyone's really chill. And you know, I'm really pleased with that because for a while I thought he was getting too aggressive. And I was thinking I was gonna have to put him in a tank on his own, which I do not want to do. I, just, I don't think that's great for any fish. Obviously a male better is a example where that does work well, but I don't know. Yeah, I'm glad it's all working. Tank is looking great and hopefully it keeps progressing. At some point, obviously the skate will need to change. I don't know how big he's gonna get. Also the Akara can get to his size now as well when they grow. I mean, you know, given time, they're already a lot bigger than when I first got them. So yeah, at some point we're gonna need to switch it out, but I think it's absolutely fine for the minute. Now the next tank is the angelfish tank. Uh, I could do a whole big trim up session right now. I'm not going to switch it up a little bit soon. The angelfish have gotten big and uh, they need a lot more space. In This aquarium is a good size for them at this stage, just less stuff, a bit more of a fish tank, but with a little bit of zhuzh to it, whatever that means, so that's what I'm gonna be doing. Yeah, so <laughs> lots and lots of plants, keeping it all healthy. Um, and there's still some uh, phantoms in the bottom here. These are the ones that I couldn't catch out when I put all the others in the eight foot. Now I thought I, I caught nearly all of them. I thought there was like one or two left, but they're very good at hiding obviously, because there's one, two, three, four, five, six there still, but I'll get them when I redo the tank. It's, it's much too difficult to do that now. But yeah, I'm not gonna do anything to this tank because like I say, another one that's gonna be redone. I might even keep the same hardscape as before, but just cut down on the plants because I've got a lot of fast growing stems in here and uh, it does take over very quickly. But that said, look look at the angelfish now. Really, really good size. They were a lot, lot smaller when I first got them. To be honest, they were all the same size as this one here. But as with you know any group of fish, you're always gonna get bigger ones and smaller ones. But look at that one. Oh, these two actually, those two were in my other scape, so I've had them longer, but absolutely fine specimens, aren't they? Yeah, so they'll get a new tank. This one's running perfect, it's just, it's a bit cramped now and I'm having to trim it every like week or so. And yeah, we can do better, we can do better. Now in terms of the fish wall, there's not a huge amount to show actually because most of the fish uh, came out. They all went into the eight foot. We've still got some flag Akara this side and we've got some keyhole sicklers that side and some uh, female betters. The best of the bunch that I originally got, I kept them because I really like their colors. Been waiting for something for them ever since. So all three of those will be the next fish in the eight foot tank. So like the feature fish, if you like. Having looking at, we'll get onto it in a second, but having looking at it now for quite a bit, I think there's definitely enough of the small fish and now it's a bit more about the feature fish, some quarries and stuff like that as well for the bottom to keep that sand moving. In fact, let's go over and take a look. Now remember, this is a almost brand new setup kind of, it's about two weeks, but, and then another week now with the fish, and so three weeks. We are definitely in the ugly phase of the aquarium. Um, maybe not can see there, let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. So at first glance, it seems pretty good, doesn't it? I mean, there's a slight tint to the water as expected. There's a lot of wood in there still leaching. We have got some leaves all floating on the surface. Those are like ones that didn't convert, maybe from the base of the plant, just sort of bre uh, breaking off. But as you can see here, look, everything else, all the plants are growing in fantastic. The autos that I put in as well have been going to town on the wood, so most of it's clean. And then there's the odd part that they haven't got round to yet, but I didn't put a huge amount in and they're all small, remember? So it's like gonna take a while for them to get all over the tank. The main thing though is down here, it's the diatoms on the sand. So it's all collecting there. It's a simple case of stirring it up, but just at the moment, it's still sort of going through the phase. So what I tend to do is just leave it for a week or so and then stir it up. And then at that point, it doesn't tend to come back or it does come back, but in a much more manageable amount that the fish, the, whatever cleaner fish you've got in there, they'll keep it to an absolute minimum by that point. So for now, I'm kind of just leaving this. It could probably have a glass scrape, um, but for the rest of it, if you know, plants are growing, it's just going through that phase it will find its own balance without us interfering. But looking great, right? With the fish sort of all swimming around. Because there's no threat to the fish, like there's no larger fish, they're just doing whatever they want, wherever they want. And you know, it's quite serene. But once we add in the different sort of fish, like the keyhole's a little bit bigger, but non-aggressive. The flag car they've been in with loads of Tetra before and been absolutely good. They will, they will sort of bunch up and sort of flow around the tank a little bit more. So I'm really looking forward to that.
there we go, glass cleaned, most of the leaves removed. There's always going to be like a couple sort of floating around. Uh, I did stir up some of the diatoms at the bottom there and you can see there's a clear patch, completely clear under them. So it's just the tiniest of layer. Like I say, I'm just going to leave that. It's actually a good barometer for me to be able to see when the tank is naturally sort of clearing up because it's all right doing the maintenance and clearing it. It'll probably come back again until it's sort of um, level, I would say, balanced. Yeah. and. Uh, that will clear up on its own and I'll know at that point that we're in that sort of sweet spot, that zone. Now, if we come over here, you can see in this corner, I've added a power head with a polishing sort of scrubber underneath. Uh, there's a little bit of a haze to the water. I think that's pretty much because I've just stirred it up, but also I didn't clean any of this sand before I put it in. So much of it, it said it was already clean. So yeah, it's all good. I'll add in some AccuClear and you watch, this will go like crystal clear within the hour. Yeah, so we're using AccuClear. Now you need to make sure whatever filter you're using has got the fine polishing sort of, uh, what do you call it, filter floss. It's fine enough to catch micro particles, you see, because what it does is it will clump together all this dustiness you can see, make it like bind, and then the filter can pick it up. If you don't have that fine floss, it will just keep circulating, so yeah. I can't see on the top. <laughs> I don't want to put it on the light. So this is what will happen at first. It will get this sort of mistiness to it. Don't panic. It's just where the, uh, the anti-flocculant or whatever it's called is doing its thing. It's like binding everything, making it more noticeable because it's all clumping together. That will go over the whole of the tank. And then, you know, like I say, within an hour or so, it'll be completely clear. There we go. We're looking miles better already. Look at that. It's a lot more vibrant. The colors are absolutely popping in the tank. This foreground is gonna clear over the next week, I'm sure of it. If it doesn't, I will intervene, but I do like to leave things, as I say, to their own devices, at least to start with. Just let it get its own balance. You can't constantly be fighting against it. If it's not finding the balance, you need to switch things up a bit. Maybe it'll be flow, something like that. But I'm confident that this is gonna be perfect. So I'm gonna leave it as it is. Fish seem happy. Very shortly, we're gonna be adding in even more fish as well. So nothing really changed on this side of the aquarium. Obviously, we've got the Mabunas here, M Mbunas. Yeah, someone did correct me and they were from Africa, so Mbunas. Now I'm questioning myself, I don't know. Anyway, they are doing fantastic. They're still growing great. Uh, no aggression really, just gentle stuff. But yeah, the tank looks a little bit tired now. Um, I'm kind of thinking that, again, I want to switch this up for them soon. Having now done another scape for Malawi cichlids that doesn't have plants, I'm, I'm much more open to do it again. I know how well it can be done. And I feel like these guys, there's a lot of them, they're a big size. There's an opportunity here for a ton of rock work. Like, I'm I, I kind of want to do a mountain scape, like big mountain coming out the back sort of thing that, that sort of has crevices and everything all between it. So looking forward to being able to do that for them. Again, though, another great tank to feed. I mean, let's face it, cichlids are absolute pigs, so. Like they get through a good sprinkle of that like pretty much instantly. <laughs> like you give it like a minute, nothing's left. So I tend to do two sort of handfuls for these guys. It's just a lot of them. They're getting nice and big now. It's obviously working really well. There's the uh, catfish at the bottom. They will scavenge. They're a type of cyanodontist. So I put a, a few of those. The cichlids get those as well, but uh, I just let them sort of fall down. There you go, they're all coming down. All the side of dentists are out. We've also got some bristle nose. So for the bristle nose, it's the algae wafers as well. I put whole ones in, and to be honest, the mbuna, they like to eat that as well. They like a little bit of vegetable in their diet, as you can tell. When some of the leaves aren't doing so good on any of the plants, they'll like eat that as well. I like to put the algae wafers right at the front if I can, and then that way I can see if it's been eaten or not. I mean, it always is in this tank. The archer fish tank is doing amazing as well. The uh, danios are always out now. Oh, look, look. Look, we've got one coming forward. He's like, he's filming, he's filming. He must be feeding as well. And then the other ones, they come as well. Look, they're kind of sheepy, they are, archer fish. They, they follow the brave one. But yeah, we've got great growth on all of the plants. Like the uh, pinnata feeder there, look, has gone absolutely nuts. And all the java ferns, these are all brand new as well. So that's great. Then the bulbitis, I've never had such healthy bulbitis as I do in this tank. That's like a brand new leaf there. One above it as well, looking so good. Oh yeah, and over this side as well, look. It looks like the sort of bulbitis that you'd want to show as the advert. <laughs> but yeah, they all know something's going on, look. Everyone's congregating. So a bit of flake for all of the smaller fish. The uh, archers will have it as well, to be honest. Not while I'm stood like this, because they're waiting. They want the mealworms. They've been having the mealworms uh, every sort of third day, something like that. Because if you think about it in the wild, there's gonna be bugs and everything falling from trees, and that's the stuff that they're gonna be looking for. They're archer fish, they're trying to shoot it down. They're not so interested in the flake, they will eat it, don't get me wrong, but they're, yeah, there we go, I just saw one eat a 
big chunk actually. So they will have it, but they really like to interact with the, uh, the bugs. They tend to stay in that back section when I'm at the front here until they start seeing some millworms and they'll come forward. We'll let all this clear up. All the other fish can eat all of this and then they'll have their treat. And that might look like a lot of food. Remember, there's a good amount of big Danios. We've got all of the loaches as well. We've got the Siamese algae eater there. There's also the perch in there. Where's the perch? There we go. Got the perch there as well. So yeah, they're all mature, decent sized fishes. So I make sure that they've got a, a good amount of food. Now I did used to feed a lot more lean and I just found that like, I wasn't getting the growth. I'd like to see the fish are all still healthy, but I get much faster fish growth now by putting in a little bit more. Um, that was probably a little bit more than I usually would, to be honest, so uh, don't judge me on that. But yeah, I'd rather put in a bit of extra food now and have to deal with a little bit more maintenance. It doesn't bother me, it's not that hard, but you do know that the fish are getting the right amount. And I mean, just look at the health of the Danios there. Looking so good. They're not normally particularly colorful. They weren't like that when I first got them, but now they've got all those really nice sort of orange tips to them as well. The perch as well, under that light, the back there. Oh, he's hiding. Come to the front, come to the front. Really, really cool fish. Predator as well. Right, all that food has been decimated. It's time to feed the mealworms. Look, here they are, lovely. My wife Kate will not go near these. Now I've gut loaded them with fish food as well, but chuck them in the foreground like that. Bang. Sometimes their aim's a little bit off, but they, they like hammer them straight out. Whoa, look at that. They're so fast as well. Most of the time, they catch them without me even seeing, but it is very fun to do. You guys getting this on camera? I'm not sure. Yeah, you must have. It's so fast. Oh, the little perch is like, where's our mealworms? Now you guys have all the other stuff, come on. Now up the top here, we have got the red tank, which is almost due a trim. I say almost, I'm just waiting a little bit longer for those sort of foreground plants just to grow a little bit. And then that way I can trim them and have them of a good height that I can reuse them or bunch them together for another scape. So another week or so, and I'll be doing that. And also the top is covered in red root floaters as well, which look beautiful, but I'll be harvesting those, take them to the fish shop, be able to swap them, swap them out for some fish and you know, provide red root floaters to their customers as well. Oh, here come the fish. Hello guys. They have colored up so nicely in this tank. They just look beautiful. Let me get in. Oh, bit of a bit of spar in there between the males. Yeah, those are the males for sure, because they're so orange. But yeah, not really much to update on that one. It's, uh, it's, it's become a, a great farm tank for reds, if I'm honest. Fish seem to love it as well, and there's lots of breeding from the shrimp that I put in there, so that's good too. And then next to it is the guppy tank. We've now only got one pair in there. Uh, the males obviously been bothering the, the female a little bit too much because she looks to have taken a little bit out of the back tail there. But she is looking absolutely perfect. We've got loads and loads of babies swimming around, just, as you can see. We've got different generations as well, because up here, yeah, there we go. Look, there's one really fast. Guppies are so hard to film. But yeah, that's like a larger one. We've also got like completely brand new babies as well. Yeah, there we go. Look, there's like a proper tiddler. So yeah, really good sort of breeding tank this, as you can see. Um, we've got some old Java fern there. I need to pick that out. But as I've been dosing this tank as well, this whole section has just like completely took off, to be honest, even with me cutting some of it out recently. I can remove the dead Java fern pieces there and everything else has come along actually all right because we've even got a little piece of cut off of red Rotala there which is growing beautifully, which shows me that the tank is doing well because that wouldn't be growing otherwise. So there we go, that's the dead Java removed. It's looking a lot more fresh again, but I feel like the, the plants, especially the stems, are looking a little less vibrant. So I'm gonna add in more of the leaf zone. It's been working well with the Java, so it's just, it just needs a little bit more. You've got things like pearlweed in the tank, sucks up nutrients so far, so you just need to adjust how much for each tank? Like every tank is different. This one needs, definitely needs more. Oh, we've got a friend. We've got a friend coming to the front. Hello, Timmy. <laughs> How's it going, buddy? He's waiting. He hasn't been fed till actually. Oh, look, look at these Odessa barbs. Look at the colors on these bad boys. Well, those are the boys. There's the female as well. They breed in this tank, believe it or not, even with Timmy. Timmy will try and hunt, but he's just very, very slow, isn't he? So he, he very often just misses, but uh, yeah, I'll give you some food in a minute, buddy. There's no point me feeding you now. You'll just take it and run off and I won't even be able to film you, but isn't he cute? My wife thinks of him as like her pet and she comes in straight away. Hello, baby. <laughs> Mummy's here. It's a... Look at his face. He always looks like he's smiling. He's so cool. Right now, moving on to the clownfish aquarium. We've got our anemone as well. 
Everything's doing great. Some things have changed. Uh, first thing I need to do to this tank, and probably the only thing I need to do to this tank, is just give the glass a little bit of a scrape. Hopefully the, uh, the camera can pick it up, but there's a little bit of a haze on the glass. Nothing that's like really bad, but it just stops the tank looking so crisp. Obviously a very easy fix, just lid off. And then my razor scraper, making sure that the clownfish stay back. The good thing about a razor scraper is you can literally feel it being clean. It's, it's hard to explain, obviously. It feels kind of gritty as I'm coming down, but then on the way back up and down again, it's just smooth. So you know you've cleaned the whole surface. And I've found that the sort of green spot algae or whatever algae it is that you get in the saltwater aquarium is a lot sort of tougher than the stuff that I get in, um, in like a freshwater aquarium. Oh, my snail's up here. Come on, buddy, come to, oh no. I'll just go around him, I'll, I'll leave him there. And then let's freshen up the glass a bit as well. One thing I've noticed is that salt water does leave really, really harsh marks on glass, like compared to fresh water. It's obviously the salt just sort of very, very visible. There we go, look, look at it nice and clear now. Look at how happy the clownfish are. They are so cool that they want me to feed them, clearly. They're begging, they know I'm here. But you might notice one thing, remember my NEM? I say NEM now, because I'm like proper salt water. <laughs> yeah, my NEM was there. It took a stroll the other day all the way to the back of this rock, and now it's gone across this way and seems to be really happy there. So, you know, who am I to argue? Not that I can do anything about it. They go where they want, don't they? What's quite nice though, is that this uh, macroalgae you see there is getting huge. And there's another little tuft there of a different type that I got from the uh, fish shop when I went. It was tiny. I stuck it underneath that rock. It's actually growing really nicely, so I'm happy with that. Now, before I scraped the glass then, the Duncan you can see there was right out, way, way bigger than that. So I think it's fed on the algae that went into the uh, water column that was scraped off the glass because it's almost like it's closed up now, you know, and feeding itself. I guess the anemone was not interested in such small amounts. <laughs> pulsing Xenia is pulsing and uh, it's gone really tall. It's like, it's like it's reaching for something. It was nowhere near that height, half that height when I first got it. So yeah, it, it, it let it do its thing. I, I don't really know. And look at the mushroom now. It's, it's just getting huge. It's getting ridiculous now, isn't it? <laughs> it's gonna take over the whole rock at some point, isn't it? And our seaweed at the side there, again, growing even more to the point where it's coming all the way over here and into this area as well. So looking forward to that spreading even further, but really, really pleased with the tank overall. Minimal maintenance, uh, just paying attention to the fish and the anemone when they need feeding. I've been told by people, do not overfeed an anemone. You can do and they will die. So I'm only really directly feeding it like once a week and the rest of the time it's sort of filtering off the water column and that seems to be working really well. Then we've got the green neon tank here. This is more like a biotope or natural style aquarium. I don't do a single thing to this uh, set up apart from just top it up when it's needed, but it's absolutely perfect at the moment. They're not as shy as they used to be at all. I get to see them quite a lot now. It's much more mimicking of a natural environment for them. Yeah, it's really nice. I suppose the one thing I can do is remove some of the floating plants because they've come out of their ring that was holding them in the middle, but it does cast sort of like a nice shadow with like a shimmer to the side. So to be honest, at the moment, I, I'm just gonna leave it. It's absolutely perfect. And I did find with green neon tetra, that I wasn't seeing them a lot at all in a, in a different kind of environment. They, with a full planted tank, they were just hidden all the time. But in this tank, I'm always seeing them. Really nice. I can, they've got a really good feeding response as well, actually. Yeah, watch this. They'll come to the, come to the top very quickly once they know food's in there. They're a very, very shy fish. There's not that many of them, so don't need that much. It's a little sprinkle. We should start to see them now. So as soon as they sense that it's in the water, there we go. Now they're all coming round. Yay! <laughs> God, they're fast, aren't they? You wouldn't have thought there were that many in there, would you? But there are. They keep themselves to themselves. <laughs> this is great. Great footage. And now for the final two large aquariums, two forefoots next to each other. This is the pearlweed monster. <laughs> it's got my... Uh... It's got my saw tails and black mollies in. Now, obviously this needs a trim, but I'm not gonna be doing it in this video. I'm doing a whole separate one where I'm gonna sort of like talk about aquascape and fish, fish keeping, my sort of journey through it all as I do the trim. So it might be something that you'd be interested in. I don't know, just like a chilled video in real time, trim it in real time. This takes quite a, quite a long time to actually sort of get through in a trimming session. I've got some really cool scissors actually, hang on. Yeah, I've got these scissors here, look. I got them from Aquarium Gardens from Dave, so it just means you can sort of I do want to try doing the whole 
beard, underwater beard trimmer thing as well, because the stems on the pearl weed are, are very thin, so it would actually work. It would be even easier. <laughs> yeah, so this tank has not had CO2 running on it now for like several months, and thank goodness for that, because if it did, it would be unstoppable, but you can even see like there's lots of oxygen just coming off of all the plants, and that's even without having CO2. So really good lighting for a start. I love these Lomini sort of uh, pendanty spotlights. And a little bit after I turned off the CO2, I noticed that the growth sort of slowed down and uh, that worried me that I wasn't gonna get any at all. So I added in a load of leaf zone at that time and it, it has literally just non-stop since then. So yeah, this would be a really tight sort of trim up I do this time. I'm gonna come right down with it, but it will look really, really good when it's done. And plants growing this fast is just an absolute sign that the tank is perfectly balanced. There's no algae anywhere, not even on the rocks. Like normally with rocks, you get some algae. There's, <laughs> algae's got no chance in this tank. How is it gonna outcompete this lot? They call it pearl weed for a reason. And the final tank on the tour is the angel fish and cardinal tank, the red stick tank, whatever you wanna call it. This is, again, that I don't have to do anything. Perfect. One of those setups where, like, from day one, I've had zero, zero problems with it. It is absolutely covered up the top here in floating plants. Again, harvest these, take them to the fish shop and swap them for fish, so that's awesome. But look at this uh, tiger lotus down here. Look at how great that looks and vibrant. Even in the sort of lower light situation we've got here with all the uh, floating plants. But I think a good thing is the fish behavior in here it's very chilled and they all seem to like it. Again, it's gonna be the sort of light levels that they'd be experiencing in the wild, close to a riverbank. And I think this sort of simulates that really well. And I also like the way we get the little bit of green mixed with the red as well, because at the top we've got red root floaters here and then we've got the mini water lettuce on this side. I tend to try and keep it over in one area like that and it's, uh, it's been playing ball so far. But yeah, more of a natural style tank, I'd say this is. I mean, I, apart from the red, it's overly red from those red root floaters, but you know, it's quite good to be able to give back to the, the community around me and also get some free fish. You, you can't complain about that, can you? So the guys at Made Ahead Aquatics Taunton basically bag it all up into like portions and sell them off for a very, very reasonable price. I mean, the amount of portion you get is way bigger than you'd get on say eBay or anywhere else you can order them from. And yeah, similar price, if not cheaper. And now for the two final nano tanks of the tour, we have got the Shell Dwellers this side, and this is a little ecosystem aquarium I've recently set up. I've released a video already. It has got some absolutely stunning neon green Respora in there. It's going through a little bit of a hazy phase. It's a new tank setup, so you, you do tend to experience that, especially in an ecosystem style where there's loads of nutrients underneath that capping layer of sand. But yeah, it's a really, really good setup, and it's very, very easy to do uh, and cheap to do as well. That was the idea, just keeping this like a low cost thing that people can have a go at. You know, get one of these tanks, get a little whim of your plants, and then maybe sort of move up to the next range or price range or ability level all that kind of thing. There is Corys in as well, I've got little Corys, but I think they're all, they're all hiding at the back section, which, yeah, they are here. Yeah, I can just about see them in the back corner there, huddled together. Quite shy, these Corys, as, as most Corys are until there's food in the mix. Just a couple of pieces of wooden here and some stones. The rest is just sort of plants that I know will grow well in a sort of medium light. It's not, not a bad little punchy light on this one, actually. So we've got Monte Carlo in the foreground. A lot of people think you have to have CO2, but there's plenty of incidences in loads of my tanks where the Monte Carlo is growing. There's low light and definitely no CO2. Like my bowl aquarium, there's no filter. The light's been off, it's just ambient light. And there's a Monte Carlo carpet that just continues to grow. And then finally, we have got the shell dweller tank with the plants all growing at the top. A classic, the peace lily, this side doing fantastic. Look the flowering. Flowers looking great. And then we had this other one here, which we thought was a ficus, but isn't a ficus. And look, look at all this brand new growth. So that has worked as well. I was starting to think that maybe you can just put any plants, house plants in the water and, and they'll do good. So maintenance wise in this tank, I don't want to do anything to be honest. These guys have basically, I've, you can see here where I've scraped the glass a little bit. These guys have escaped the tank themselves. Whatever they've done is how they want it. And to come in here and start sort of sucking up little bits of cyanobacteria or algae off of things, it just feels like it's gonna disturb it. They're, they're really sort of peaceful. They've found their own little zones. Each one of them's got its own little home and I'm pretty sure they'll start breeding quite soon as well. So for me to go in there now and just start messing around with that substrate after it's been, you know, 
a month and a half or so of them like getting comfortable. I mean, look at the size of that pile in the corner there. That was completely flat. No, this is their tank. This is not for me to interfere with. Look at those two cuties at the back there. So some of them find their own little homes in the cracks in the rocks. Others are taking residence in the shells themselves. Most of the shells in the front are taken for. So yeah, there's cracks in the rocks and everything like that as well. I might add in a few more of these big shells actually, because I think they prefer to be in the shells and the rocks, or maybe that's me thinking they would. Maybe they don't actually care. But yeah, a great little tank, this one. I love that it's here, because when I'm watching something, I can just look to the side and just catch what they're doing and any sort of behavior. They don't do much behavior stuff when there's a big lens in the way, but they do when you just take a little look Oh no, they're doing something now. That's a male and a female, I think. But yeah, great little tank. Well, I hope you've all enjoyed this video. I've really enjoyed making it. There's plenty more to come, so make sure you're subbed and belled and stuff like that. And I'll see you on the next one.